what I find one of the most interesting things about Syrah. The same varietal tastes completely different depending on where you grow. It tastes different from Lodi or Australia or Washington or the Northern Rhone or Paso or Rock Creek. Wherever you grow it, the, it tastes different. It has different characteristics, has different fruit character, has different sugar levels. It's one of the things that absolutely, absolutely fascinates me about this variety. I do these wine tastings where I'll open up like six different Syrahs. You've been to yeah, that. I've been to several. It's amazing. And it's, oh, that's interesting. What's that, Syrah? Okay, try this. Oh, that's completely different. What's that, Syrah? Just completely different. The Santa Barbara Syrah. It's, I hesitate to use this word because people not in the wine business miss through it. It's, it's sweeter than the, the Washington. It's a loaded word that you have to be very careful. You use the word sweet, people automatically go to sweet. So you have to be very careful about using it. Right. Get a glass. See what yeah. I, I, you'll see what I mean. Is this your glass? Uh, I believe it is so. now. It is. All right. no, That's sure the Walla Walla. It's not sweet, but it's sweeter than this. It's in the upper palate. Upper? Yeah. Okay, hang on. It's now, up here. And now where do I try it? Just all over? This one you're going to taste your whole palate. But pay attention to your upper palate. It's not a you're sweet. You're right, you're right. And it's all concentrated there. That's interesting. But I'm thinking, because of the mustard, because it's because it's close to vinegar. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. This might shine better. The Santa Barbara. Right. Whereas without the mustard, this would absolutely be the best cocktail choice. Yeah, I, I'm predicting they're both going to work really well, but we might find mm -hmm. because of the mustard and that vinegar that's tended to the mustard. This might work best. Hey, John, what the hell are you doing? I'm working. I got to cook them all. You're fired. I am. I know. We already drank all the wine. Good evening. All right, so they've made an extraordinary lamb dish today <coughs> with a wine reduction sauce that you probably just heard. <coughs> so my go-to pairing with lamb all the time is Syrah, but Syrah is a varietal that tastes completely different depending where it comes from. A Syrah out of Lodi tastes completely different than a Syrah out of Northern Rhone, where it originates. It tastes different than a Washington Syrah. It tastes completely different than a Shiraz out of Australia. So, whenever I'm pairing lamb with Syrah, never choose a, a Syrah, a Shiraz, nor a Lodi. Syrah because it's too jammy. So tonight we have a Walla Walla Washington State Syrah Le Col and a Santa Inez Mountain actually Valley Syrah called Santa Barbara because it's just north of Santa Barbara. Now the Santa Barbara Syrah. Um, it's a tad sweeter than the Washington. 
So I pulled out both. Twenty dollars, forty dollars. The wines on their own, the Le Col is just extraordinarily better. But let's see what pairs best. This lamb was cooked herb crusted with mustard, which is a little vinegary. So I pulled the Saint Inez because I thought, because of the mustard on the lamb, I might want to cut that vinegar with something a little sweet. But I just had that with the reduction on it, with the Walla Walla. God, that's good. Oh my God, that's good. Now I'm gonna try, dude, that is so good. Try it. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm going to try the lamb without the reduction in the Santa Inez. The Washington State Syrahs, because it's a cooler climate, remind me of Hermitage character Syrah from the Northern Rhone. Friggin' lovely. All right. I'm glad you like them. All right. So, no, no reduction. Okay. Without the reduction. Santa Inez is good. Come here. Yes. Why, did you misbehave? Yeah. <laughs> I can't fit in at a small little table. I have to stay in Never, never Lodi, Syrah, or Shiraz, but Syrah. It just pairs with it so well. Um, this cigar is excellent. Right? Oh my God. What is it again, Gary? It's, it's the Illusion 88 Maduro. Nicaragua? Out of Nicaragua. Would you say this is great for an after meal like this? I tell you what, it goes really good with this Syrah. So there we go. So after this Syrah, after this meal with the Syrah, you grab one of these 88s. You know what I would like now? One of those classic Italian uh, rum cakes. Chocolate and rum. I'm talking about Little Italy rum yes. cakes. Uh, it's not rum cakes. What they do is they make a chocolate something. dense cake <laughs> and then when they're ready to serve it, they, they pour rum on top. That's good. Yeah, that would be so I've good with this. I was a senior in high school. I had a 10 year old Volkswagen bug. Nice. The what color? I have no idea. The, <laughs> the original moonroof, which looked like a shower curtain. Uh, <laughs> yes, I didn't know as you pull them back. Yep. And we, we used to frequent a place down in Little Italy, right next to Chinatown called Luna's. The same old man was always the waiter. He must have been, I don't know, 130 years old. He was a fixture in that place. If he knew you, you can order shrimp scampi. It wasn't on the menu. What was the name of the, the music venue? Village East. Um, and we went there afterwards. I think we saw Hendrix that night, who knows. Really? Really? Jimi Hendrix? I saw him at Woodstock. I saw him do really? the, the Star Spangled Banner. You lived, Gary. Yeah. That was <laughs> you lived. You. So I don't remember which night this was. God, what I remember I know, was, God. it was, we, it was like two in the morning, we went to Luna's, they were still open. If you knew the old guy well enough, 
they would make you shrimp scampi, which was a big deal in 69. But the other three guys in the car standing through the hole in the roof, <laughs> cheering. And you know how you know how sound travels at three in the morning in Manhattan. Three in the morning, nobody's oh, there. Shit. Nobody's there, and it's echoing everywhere. And we made every single light. You're making me homesick, Gary. <laughs> It was like it was. It was so significant that all the guys who were in the car with me said something about it in my yearbook. <laughs> Here's a lesson. Syrah is always a good choice with lamb, but how you prepare it changes what's the right choice. What's the right choice, and you have to pay attention always to how things are prepared, not just what they are. So we always say, I always say with lamb, Syrah is the way to go. But depending on how it's prepared, a different approach to Syrah changes everything. So the lesson is, pay attention to how something's prepared, not just what it is. It's like the lesson last time with, with scallops. Remember how this night started? You would tell me how you taste plum in something? Yes. And what was my answer? Whatever you taste is legitimate. And people just perceive things, taste things differently. And it's all valid. Just because I have more active taste buds doesn't make my, my experience more valid than yours. So when you taste something that's plum, and I don't taste any plum in it, I taste the currant and blackberry. That was a good damn wine, that wasn't was it? It is a good wine. That was a really wine. good damn wine. These are good, huh?